after making this video, I realized I probably could have just used my truck as a dually example. So I'm frequently asked, what are the big differences between a dually and a single rear wheel truck? So, of course, besides the extra width that you're going to get from a dually, which in most cases is going to be about 13 inches off each side, the other aspect that you have to keep in mind is that in Ford's case, your duallys, especially crew cabs, are going to be 8-foot beds. So where you can opt for a 6.5-foot bed with a single rear wheel truck, your only option in crew cab configuration is going to be an 8-foot bed. So you will have additional length to the truck. Also, your duallys will sit a little bit lower than your single rear wheel trucks, and that's mainly because they understand that you're probably going to be using a dually to tow either a gooseneck or a fifth wheel trailer. And by lowering the back slightly, or making the back sit a little lower, it's easier to hitch up, and you don't risk the chance that your fifth wheel or gooseneck won't clear the rails right here, which is more of a concern if you have a fifth wheel than a gooseneck. From a rear suspension perspective, you're going to have an additional leaf spring in the main pack and you're always going to have an overload leaf on your dually trucks versus your single rear wheel trucks which have three main leafs in the leaf pack. You get an overload spring if you have a 350 single rear wheel or if you get the camper package on the 250. And here's a leaf pack on a 350 single rear wheel truck. Three main leafs with one overload spring again versus four main leafs with an overload spring. The leaf springs on the dually are also much firmer and they're slightly thicker because duallys generally have a significantly higher payload capacity than a single rear wheel truck. So here is a F250 and an F350, both single rear wheel trucks parked side by side. As you can tell, the F350 is about two inches taller than the F250 and I'll show you exactly why. So on the F350, you have these blocks right here, and these blocks are roughly three and three quarters inches tall. And part of the reason why is to give the back a slight rake or a slight lift in case you're gonna be hauling heavier loads. And that's when you put a heavier load in the back, it levels out the truck easier as opposed to squatting the ride. And as you can see on this F250, this block right here is only about two inches tall. It's a significantly shorter block. And the main reason why is because it gives the truck a more level ride and a level stance since it's less likely that you'll be putting as heavy of a load in the back of an F-250. Many, many people will simply take 350 blocks and swap them out here to give the back of their 250 a higher ride. Looking under the F-350 single rear wheel again, one thing you will note is that it's going to have your standard Sterling axle, which is the exact same axle as you get on the 250 Super Duty. Whereas on the 350 Dually, you're going to get a Dana 80 rear axle. On the 2017 model, it's actually a whole different axle, but I'm comparing 2016's for the sake of this particular video. The Dana 80 is a significantly heavier duty axle than the Sterling axle used under the 250 or the 350 single rear wheel trucks. Also on a 350 dually, your conventional towing and your hitch is going to be much greater rated. Generally it's going to be between about 17 and 19,000 pounds on a 2016 model and up to 21,000 pounds on a 2017 model. Whereas on an F350 single rear wheel, you're generally going to be between about 13 and 15,000 pounds conventional towing, sometimes less. Another key difference to think about is stability. You're going to have a much more stable towing ride when you're towing with a dually versus a single rear wheel truck for two reasons. One, if you have a long wheelbase truck such as this one right here, the extra length of the truck plus the extra width and contact patch that the tires create are going to reduce sway significantly simply because when you're towing a conventional trailer, that pivot point that you would have in the back which causes sway is reduced across the length of the truck and because of the increased width of surface contact the dually tires give you. Whereas on a short wheelbase truck that's not dually, which of course is the only configuration it comes in, when you only have one tire on the back, especially if the sidewall of that tire is greater, that tire itself can actually flex and induce sway. Plus, the length of the truck can work negatively against you. So if you're going to be towing a large travel trailer, it's definitely better to tow it with a longer wheelbase truck. 
Another reason why it's better to tow it with a Super Duty versus, say, a half-ton truck is because the increased weight of the truck can also work against sway and help reduce it. A lot of people believe the only time you need a dually is if you're going to be hauling a fifth wheel or a gooseneck, and that's absolutely incorrect. A dually, simply because of its length, its weight, and the increased width of the back and the contact area, is going to be a far better towing platform for even a travel trailer than a single rear wheel truck or even a half ton truck. Another thing to think about is payload capacity. Single rear wheel trucks such as the F-350 right here, are very close in payload capacity to the F-250 truck. And this is regardless of whether it's a 2016 or a 2017 model. Generally, depending on which package you have, the wheelbase, it's going to be anywhere between about 2,600 pounds to about 3,300 pounds maximum payload. So there's not a heck of a lot of difference between an F-350 single rear wheel truck and an F-250 truck in terms of payload. Payload capacity is really where dualies shine. That's one of the big reasons that people opt for a dually pickup truck is the significant increase in payload capacity. A truck like this one in front of me here has roughly a 6,400 pound payload capacity. So it's almost 2,000 pounds greater than an F-350 single rear wheel truck. That's again one of the reasons why it has dualies is to support the additional weight as well as a more beefed up axle, beefed up leaf spring setup, and hitch setup. Another reason people opt for an 8-foot bed versus a 6.5-foot bed is because if you're hauling a fifth wheel, it places the hitch of the fifth wheel further towards the back of the truck, which gives you a much lower chance of making contact between the front of a fifth wheel and the back cab of the truck. Versus a short wheelbase or a short bed truck, simply because you don't really have the additional space you'd need in the bed for the clearance. One of the points that I had made in a previous video was that when you opt for a 350, especially with an 8-foot bed, you're much more likely to get a hitch prep package already included. And I highly recommend that if you're going to be towing a fifth wheel or if you're looking at a truck, you get it with the hitch prep package. It saves you a lot of time, saves you money, and it's warranted by the manufacturer. Actually, after looking at all of these trucks, most of the trucks do not include any type of hitch prep. The only ones that do are a few of the 350s with the 8-foot beds as well as the dualies. One thing I want you to note with the 350s is the stance. You'll notice that the truck is far more level even when it's unloaded. And again, that's because the truck is really designed to haul a fifth wheel or a gooseneck, and it keeps the back slightly lower, which is a little bit more convenient for you if you're going to be trying to hitch up a fifth wheel. Whheras all of your single rear wheel F-350 or one ton single rear wheel trucks are going to have a rake in the back. And generally it's about two to two and a half inches taller in the back than it is the front, which can make it, you know, a little bit tricky sometimes to prep and get your fifth wheel hitch and your trailer height perfectly lined up so you have that clearance that you need to keep from making contact with the bottom overhang of your fifth wheel and the bed rail of your truck. Again, this picture demonstrates perfectly the height difference between an F-250, which is this truck right here, and an F-350, which is right there. Both single rear wheel trucks. And here's the height difference between a 2016 F-350, which has the taller blocks and sits higher in the back, and a 2017 F-250, which still sits about an inch and a half taller at the bed rail than the F-350 in the 2016 model. So I can see where some folks might have some challenges hitching these up to fifth wheels simply because a lot of fifth wheels don't give you that much room or much hitch adjustment to really compensate for the increased pickup truck heights that you're seeing now. Again, one last comparison between a 2017 F-250 and a 2016 F-250 and the difference in height. As you can see, the 17 is significantly taller in the back than the 16. And one final note, a big difference is going to be in your gear ratios between dualies and single rear wheels, but not so much the gear ratio itself as to the tire height requiring a higher or a lower gear ratio. So for instance, on dually trucks, these are going to be 17 inch wheels. These tires are going to be significantly shorter than even the tires on, let's say, an F-250 like this truck, which rides on a 20 inch wheel. So this tire is approximately 35 inches tall. It's actually a little taller than 35 inches whereas this tire is going to be closer to about a 32 and a half inch tire. Because of that, your gear ratio is going to be different on both trucks as well. So a 410 or 430 gear ratio on a truck like this 
is going to be much different than the gear ratio on an F250, mainly because of the difference in tire size. So the logic behind gear ratios is how many revolutions your drive shaft is going to have to turn to spin your tire one complete revolution. So if you see 430 to 1 gear ratio, that simply means that your drive shaft has to spin 4.3 revolutions to spin your back tire one full revolution. And that's where a lot of your gear ratios will be different between a dually and a single rear wheel truck, just given the fact that the single rear wheel trucks are generally going to have a taller tire. So to wrap things up, if somebody asked me what truck they should buy for a specific type of trailer, I would generally recommend that if you're moving to any fifth wheel, that you generally opt for a dually. Mainly because of the increased stability it's going to give you, simply because of the width and the length of the truck. Also, it's going to add payload capacity that a single rear wheel truck generally won't have unless you add things like airbags or add leafs to it. But more importantly, it's going to be a safer towing experience because you have more traction touching the ground, a longer wheelbase vehicle, a heavier vehicle, as well as a greater payload capacity. If you're going to be towing a travel trailer or any type of boat and you're really under that 10,000 pound threshold. You know, a three quarter ton truck is probably going to be fine for you. Again, the longer the wheelbase that you get, the safer the towing experience you're going to have simply because of the sway control that's just inherent in a longer wheelbase truck. I never really suggest that you use a half ton truck to try to tow a fifth wheel um, or even a very large travel trailer. Even though the towing specs of these half ton trucks have gone through the roof for what they are, the challenge you still have is that these trucks are very light. And because they're light, generally because they don't have the wheelbase that a three quarter ton or a one ton truck will have, it's going to make you much more likely to have sway. And sway can be detrimental, especially in high winds. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this answered that question on what are the main differences between a dual rear wheel truck and a single rear wheel truck. I'm sure there's others and there's other advantages and disadvantages people can probably think of such as parking situations, car washes, drive throughs things like that where a dually truck might not be the best fit. But for towing, you really can't beat it. It is a wider truck to park, but for the most part you get used to it and you, know, you, you just kind of learn to back into all the parking spots you're going to want to go to. Anyways, I hope this video has been informative. If it has, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and if you could subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone.